I like the line you came up with, Alonzo, that was just sitting there. It should have been, the tagline should have been, they're young, they're in love, they eat people. <laughs> That's Pretty brilliant. Much. I was thinking about that because it's got a lot of like Bonnie and Clyde to it for sure. Mm. Um, so Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell are young cannibals in love. I don't think I'm a bad person. Hey, baby, hey, baby. All I think is that I love you. We first see Taylor Russell and her dad, played by Andre Holland, and um, they are living in total squalor. And there's something about her that keeps forcing them to move. And we learn pretty quickly and pretty. Um, gnarly in a gnarly way what exactly that might be she goes on the run meets up with mark rylance eventually meets up with timothy chalamet and they all have this thing about themselves they can smell each other they sense this thing in each other that they are cannibals and it is this grungy story of crime and romance as these two people from very disparate backgrounds who have this vital thing in common, like cling to each other desperately and quickly for survival. And they go on the run. And um, there's a, a shocking amount of romanticism to it for a film that is so bloody and so violent, like shockingly violent. Like, you know, if you have seen Luca's Suspiria, you know, he which is also written by um, David Kaganich, who wrote this as well, and also wrote A Bigger Splash. Um, He'll lull you in with gorgeous imagery, and it's it's really vivid and it's tactile. And then, like something really shocking happens, something really bloody happens, and so it's it's this mixture of romance and violence. And um, I don't love this, but I admire a lot about the weird places that it goes. I never knew what to expect. I like the two of them together. They have sort of a a melancholy, wistful kind of longing, and you just know that like this thing is doomed. This thing that has fortified them, no pun intended, ultimately cannot last, and so that kind of lingers throughout. And uh, I like the use of music and just sort of the the sense of place of all the grungy towns that they end up in on their road trip. They go through like Kentucky and Iowa and. Nebraska at one point, Minnesota eventually. There's not really a sense of condescension toward these places, but it just feels like this is where they feel the most comfortable, laying low and daring to have a dream of happiness, like normalcy and happiness in society, which clearly they cannot achieve. So I liked a lot about it, but I don't love it the way I love like Call Me By Your Name or Suspiria. Uh, yeah, I didn't love this either in that I hated it. Um <laughs> You hated it? I kind of hated it. Yeah. It was sort of like, <laughs> all right, I see that we're what we're doing here. This is like Badlands, basically. Mm -hmm. This is the sort of amour fou of, you know, this couple who are on the run. And, you know, it's everything's very sort of sun dappled and gorgeous, but they are, you know, at odds with the world and will never find peace within that world. And I'm like, and, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, the cannibalism felt to me more like a gimmick of making the plot happen as opposed to being like a metaphor for something. It just was sort of there. And so you have this like lyricism and then suddenly you have this kind of bloody violence. And I didn't feel strongly about either. And mm -hmm. I didn't really care about the characters. I didn't care what happened to them. Their relationship with each other was just sort of like felt partially of necessity and then maybe it does lead kind of to some genuine stuff but they're tragic because they have this thing that they can't control and it's made with a great deal of care and craft yeah. and yet i just didn't get involved in any of it and i didn't understand what it was all supposed to come together as and so there are people who who love this movie yeah. in the same way there are people who love suspiria which i really despised yeah. um do you and, like this less than suspiria <sighs> It's hard to say. Suspiria made me actively angry. And this movie just <laughs> sort of like, I just never got why we were bothering with any of it. You know, like I am love. I still mm -hmm. think is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And I love Call Me By Your Name. I love um, a Bigger Splash. But, uh, I, I, you know, and I, I want to see the Salvatore Ferragamo documentary mm -hmm. he just did. But mm -hmm. this and Suspiria, I'm like, I don't. I don't understand him as a horror guy, like what he's trying to convey and what the point of all this is. And so, yeah, it just left me cold. With Suspiria, I suspect it's more of like an exercise in a style. 
Like sure. it's just fun coming off of these really languid, like luxurious love stories sure. in I Am Love and Call Me By Your Name. Just like the fun of the visceral shock, I'm sure, has a great deal to do with his his being drawn to that kind of material. But for this, I do kind of think there could be a metaphor. And I know you probably think that I think everything's about addiction. But I do think that it could be a metaphor for addiction, like that they they need each other to find that next fix. And I know I compare a lot of things to Barfly, <laughs> but I think this is like Barfly in that it's two people who never would have met and never sure. would have connected if they didn't have this mutual need that they can help each other satisfy you know i think uh, it, it could be a metaphor about poverty i think it, it has a lot of like um you mentioned badlands it reminded me a lot of like american honey too in mm. that it's an exploration of like what it's like to be young and poor in america and um how they do what they must to survive and they prey on whoever they must to survive i mean the addiction read is a valid one but i mm. kind of feel like we've seen that movie so mm. many times of like the young desperate heroin addicts or whatever mm. Uh, th I don't know I, that he, if that is what he's doing, he's not finding a new way into it apart from the central metaphor of no, but they're cannibals. See, uh <laughs> there are so many individual moments here though, that were just like startling to me, either in their beauty or in their tension. The whole scene by the campfire with Michael Stuhlbarg and David Gordon Green. I'm like, where are we going with this? This is, this could go in any direction at any moment in time. And I found great tension in yeah. that. I also didn't realize it was Michael Stuhlbarg at first. Yeah, no, he, that took me a second too. Like, oh, he okay. looks so grungy <laughs> and just so like, Ugh. and and it's an interesting kind of different different relationship with Timothy Chalamet than they had in <laughs> yes. Coming by Your Name for sure. And, and then the, the, I, the Mark Rylance Green, moments are so bizarre. Like, those are. Yeah. And, and and like at first bizarre in an interesting way and then just kind of like okay what why you know i don't know that i i agree i felt kind of like is that just being creepy for the sake of being creepy just to skeeve us out whatever um i like david gordon green in just this very small role i don't think he acts very often uh he does not but he <laughs> was gonna make the suspiria remake at one point if you recall Oh, and then he did the Halloween movies instead. Yeah, like he was all set through Suspiria and then Guadagnino wound up doing, getting it instead. So they must have met and bonded at some point in that process, I guess. Oh, I that's interesting. And then like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did the score. And mm -hmm. so it's it's very moody as far as like putting you on edge and creating a sense of mystery. I think they're, they're really good at, at that in understated ways. So I like the music. I like the look of it. The costume design, you know, they are really good together. They have an interesting chemistry with each other because it's just, it's so sad. Like, you know that they can't be happy. You know that right. they, there's no happily ever after for these people. No, I, I I did like the two of them. And I would like mm -hmm. to see Chalamet and Russell in another film because I think they have interesting, you know, uh, an interesting back and forth and, and, and. I don't know if chemistry is necessarily the word here, yeah. but they, they do interact in a way that's really interesting. Uh, I just wish that they had different material because I just was not really responding to this. But yes, I agree with you on a craft level. Mm -hmm. There, this movie is, you know, he, Guadagnino never half asses it in terms of yeah. like the cinematography and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of care put into this. I just don't think the script works. Okay. So what's your number? It said four and a half. Okay. I'm saying 7.3. Okay. We are deviating here more than we ever usually do. So Bones and All is out in theaters, what, this weekend and then it's going to expand? I think it's New York, LA this weekend and then it's going to be uh, opening wider. All right, you guys, sink your teeth into it and let us know.